Hi, this is Rick from Four Community, creating community spaces so you can connect with others and also with God. One of the things that I really enjoy doing these days is helping my friends set themselves up with their own therapy practice. Now, I mean, I can't do that with everybody. I mean, my friends that I met in the grad degree that I went through, which trained me to be able to be a psychotherapist today. So I've been able to go through that journey, and now I have my own practice, and I, I love the journey. I'm still loving the journey. My friends, some of my friends, however, they just got stuck along the way somewhere. And so occasionally I have a friend that reached out and say, please help me try to figure out where I'm getting stuck here. And I just come alongside them and help them get unstuck. The thing that I really love about this is setting my helping to set my friends up with their own practices is I'm not really teaching them anything at all. I'm showing them that they already have all that they need because they're educated. They're just a little stuck along the way. And then suddenly as I'm walking alongside them, helping them, this aha moment dawns on them like, oh, that's what this is. That's what this is about. I love it when, when they have that aha moment. And I've done nothing. I've just helped them to get unstuck. And that's it. It's really fun seeing my friends come to that realization. What about you? Has anyone ever helped you have that aha moment? Has anyone ever helped you discover that? Maybe you were stuck in your thinking about something, and then they showed you that you were already skilled or gifted or ready to do whatever this new thing is that you're trying to do. If you've got a story, please pause the video and share it with whoever you're watching with. This video is based on my interpretation of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 7 through 9, which shows us that all of us already have everything that we need to be great, at least from a certain point of view. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 7 through 9. Now you have every spiritual gift you need as you eagerly wait for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be free from all blame on the day when our Lord Jesus Christ returns. God will do this for he is faithful to do what he says and he has invited you to partnership with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. <laughs> Why? Because you kids need to watch Connect HQ. We already did, see? Oh yeah, you did. Good job. You may cross the path. Good thing we watched Connect HQ. Yeah. Here's a point that I'd like to make to you about this text. You've got what you need to be great. At least from a certain point point of view. There are two things that are really jumping out to me. First, the idea that we have all that we need. That's the first part of the text. And second, the idea that we're partners. These two ideas are really leading me to believe that you've already got all that you need to be great. So as I reflect on this, I actually think back to all of the years of prayer meetings that I've been a part of, either as a Simple Jesus follower or as a pastor. Those prayer meetings were filled with sentiments like Jesus if you just do this, then I can do this for you, or then my life will be better. Or Jesus, I need you so much for some reason. Now, I'm not interested in criticizing anyone's prayer time. You go ahead and pray as much as you want. I don't want to make you feel bad for praying. You just go ahead. I do, however, see a point in this passage that I think it's so important for all of us to hear regarding all that praying that we're doing about God showing up to make something happen, to make us something special, to give us some kind of super duper power. I wonder if we are what's showing up to make something happen that's already powerful to put something into place. I wonder if you've already got all that you need to be great. And I think you do. Here's my first point. You're empowered. The text says you have every spiritual gift you need. Way, way back, I mean, way back in grade nine, I took typing. In the first semester of grade nine, I went to a typing class, and it wasn't on computers. It was on an actual typewriter with the ribbon and everything. Now, I didn't do too bad. By the end of that semester, I was about 40 words per minute, not too bad. However, I compartmentalized everything. 
and I pretty much still do. I never took my typing skills into my computer science class where I was learning how to code. I didn't take it into my English class where I had to write essays or type essays. In my coding classes, I would be typing out code with just my pointer fingers, and it was taking me so long. I even one day went up to my coding teacher, my computer science teacher, and I said, there's got to be a quicker way to get all of this code into the computer. And he's like, dude, you've already got what you need. Just do it. And it suddenly hit me. One day while I was tired, I was in my computer science class trying to code, and I rested my fingers on the keyboard as though I was in typing class, and I had this, aha, I see now the error of my ways and what I have been missing. And I just started typing. I made the connection. And I wished that I had made the connection sooner. I wasn't using my typing skills in my English class or my computer class or anywhere else. I just didn't make the connection until that day. That little illustration for me shows you how I am perceiving this particular verse. When we choose to believe in Jesus and get humble enough to follow him, he gives us a deep part of himself called the Holy Spirit. He is actually with us. And I mean all the time at the store with our friends, when we're shopping, when we're driving, when we're working. It's almost a stalker, man. And all of those moments when we think we really need him and we pray, Jesus, be with me right now and help. Hello? He's already there. He's already listening. He is already with you. So as I interpret this, here's what I'm thinking. Sometimes when we think we need to pray and get God's strength and answer and guidance, some of those times I don't think we need to pray at all. I think that some of the time with our normal day-to-day lives, I think we're already equipped with what we need. I think we just haven't made the connection yet, and maybe we're just a little afraid. We haven't had that aha moment yet. Maybe we're afraid to talk to somebody or do something that we've never done before or take a risk. And so we pray. And I think that sometimes our prayers are actually like, God, do this thing for me because I'm afraid and I don't want to make all of that stuff up all on my own. Now, I'm not saying we stop praying. I'm never going to say stop praying. I'm not saying that we should not be praying for miracles, but because we can and we should be praying for miracles. I'm saying that. We have already been given so much from God. Let's take a moment to think about what he's already given us. Use what we've got before we start asking for more. Take a step of faith and trust rather than asking God to do the hard things for you. He's equipped you to do some hard and really awesome things things. And sometimes the harder the thing is that we're doing, the greater the outcome is. Now, here's what I think. I think that God has already equipped us to do some big, hard, scary things without first praying for God's presence and strength and wisdom, because I think you've already got it. I think if we keep reading the Bible, praying, staying committed to being a Jesus follower, we've got the wisdom, we've got the strength, we've got his, we've got his presence to use, and we're just getting stuck. We're just getting a faith cramp. Listen, keep praying, keep connecting with God, don't stop doing that. But remember, you've already got so much going for you just because you're a Jesus follower. Take a pause. Consider what Jesus has already given you and done for you, and consider how you can use that before you start crashing and pausing and getting stuck asking for something completely different. Actually, consider this. You're empowered with agency. The text says he has invited you into partnership. Now, I personally love the word agency. Now, sometimes people will ask me to pause when I use this word because it's not a common word for everybody. When I say agency, people think of it as a noun, as though it's a place to go for help or something. Agency is like self-efficacy, competency. It's your ability to get something done. You have the autonomy, the strength, the intelligence, the capacity to do something all on your own for yourself and for others. Agency is kind of like the opposite of apathy. When someone is apathetic, it may be because they've got the ability to do something all on their own for themselves, but they choose not to. Instead, they try to force others to do the thing that they could do themselves, and they don't take an interest 
and they don't really care, apathetic. Agency is the opposite of that. Agency is knowing that you, an autonomous person, has some sort of ability to act, and you're going to act on taking care of yourself and caring enough to do something important for other people too. With God's spiritual gifts, presence, and His Holy Spirit, you've got agency. You and I don't have to ask for permission to talk about God or do something for somebody else or choose to excel in a certain direction that's going to give your life meaning and will also give others' lives meanings that come alongside you and you alongside them. You are actually considered God's partner. God has partnered with you to show that his nation is currently on planet Earth, his presence, he cares, God has partnered with you so that he's got someone who will communicate and demonstrate the present reality of God's nation on earth and his love for everyone. You don't got to pray about that. That's already a reality inside of you. You are a kingdom agent. So that's what's really jumping out to me in this passage. You've got this. You've got what you need to be great. Just show up and go for it, man. Just show up and try. Just show up and experiment and learn. You've got this. You don't got to pray first. Just show up and go for it. You've got what you need to be great. Whatever else is going to come in this letter in 1 Corinthians. Yes, I've started a new series around 1 Corinthians. I'm not sure how long we'll stay in it. I'll probably go 1 and 2 Corinthians. Whatever else is coming out, we know that through all the correction, all the instruction that we're going to see in 1 2 Corinthians, we know that this is something that every believer is empowered to do. If you're a Jesus follower, you are an empowered partner of God that can really make a difference for yourself and for others. You've got this, so take a step of faith and just go for it. Well, that's it from me to you for now. Would you please like? Would you please share? Would you please subscribe and ask for the link? We're meeting two times this Sunday. Once a Sunday at 10.30, and the second time Sunday at 6 o'clock. And by the way, Sunday at 6 o'clock tends to be all men. If you are a man and you want to join with other men to have a Bible discussion, just kind of chill, just kind of talk about what's ever on your mind, that's what we do on Sunday night. So guys, come on out, ask for the link. If you'd like to contribute, would you please look in the show notes and find the link below for community, creating community spaces so you can connect with others and also with God. See you next time.